Perfect. So, good evening to one and all. Uh, a very happy new year to all of you. It's better late than never. So, welcome to the day one for this bootcamp where you guys will going to learn about how you can make the deployment of your machine learning model, right? So, so far, uh, what all bootcamps we have taken, it's all about how you can learn Python, how you can learn machine learning, deep learning, maybe further more concept, right? But what exactly needs to be done? What exactly needs to be done after that? Is making a project in a notebook or Jambo or not Jambo, it's Google Collab. Is it okay? Not, right? So today we're going to push our limit furthermore and we're going to understand about this bootcamp. And believe me guys, this bootcamp will going to be really, really amazing. The reason being is that not only you will going to create some project, but you will going to create a website for that project. And it will not be a full stack project. It will be a data science project because you will be implementing your machine learning model. So are you guys excited? Come on, tell me. Are you guys excited? I know by the name of by the title only, majority of the people are excited. Like today we are going to learn something new, right? Perfect. And first of all, those who are facing some uh, resolution issue, can uh, you can upgrade your resolution to a higher resolution as well. Okay, so you can do that with the setting option. Perfect. So let's start and let's understand what are we going to do during this seven days? What are we going to do during this seven days? Okay, let's start this. Perfect. So how I have managed the entire seven days is that I believe, uh, first of all, I want to know that is there anyone who don't know about Python? Because so far, I believe that you guys are aware of Python. Yes or no? A slight uh, information and knowledge about Python is also okay. Okay. So is there anyone who knows about Python? Anyone who knows about Python? Come on, come on. Okay. I can see there are some people who don't know anything about Python. Don't worry. We are going to start from the scratch. Little knowledge, perfect. Little knowledge is fine. Unless and until you know English language, you know Python. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So if we take the percentage, uh, approximately 95% of them already know about Python, right? Don't worry about the 5%. You are going to go on with that. Exactly. You know when Resim has developed it in 1995. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So what we are going to do is doing day one, day two, and day three. These three days will be dedicatedly be going to go with Python. Okay. As you can say the slight part of day three because in this three, in uh, on day three, we are we may, if we get time, we may gonna consider pandas and we are going to consider numpy as well. Okay. So this is the schedule for the upcoming day three. Okay, we're going to start with the panda, uh, Python. I know many of you know about py, uh, Python, but there are still some people who are not aware of Python, right? So we're going to refresh uh, some of the co concept and we're going to understand what exactly Python means, okay? On day fourth, we are going to start with machine learning. We are going to start with machine learning. Obviously, we cannot cover the entire machine learning in the single day in one hour, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to understand about machine learning. We are going to know about what is machine learning and we are going to cover some project. We are going to create a project in machine learning as well. So we are going to cover linear regression. We are going to cover linear regression in this entire session. Okay. And though there are plenty of algorithms in the market, but uh, for the fact of simplicity, we are going to go with linear regression. Okay. On day fifth, on day fifth, it may happen that uh, the linear regression part may gonna drag up. Okay, we're going to try our best to uh, cover that up in day four itself. If it may drag up, we are going to cover that in day five. But in day five, we're going to learn about Flask. We are going to learn about Flask from here, our deployment start. Okay, we are going to learn about Flask, how we can take a model and we can create a website. Okay, on day six, we are going to learn about deployment. We are going to learn about deployment. What exactly does this deployment mean? What is this deployment? Deployment mean is that you are creating a website, right? When you create a website, only you can see that. Only you can see that because you are running that website on your local, right? Now, if I want to under, uh, uh, if I want to see your project, suppose uh, you are living in Mumbai, you have developed a project, right? In a machine learning part. I am living in Delhi. Now, I want to see your project. So, what's a better way to do that? 
obviously you can uh, push your code on your github and you can add some screenshot that's a different thing what you can do is you can deploy your entire project that means you can host your project into live and you can give me a link that okay this is a link of my website kindly serve that up and you will going to see that easily and believe me guys this will make a very very a higher impact on your resume okay instead of putting your uh, notebook file that okay i have done this project and uh, you can see my notebook but in if you do replace it with your links that means your working models your working website it will going to make a higher impact so we're going to understand at free of cost okay without paying a single penny how we can host our website live so that any person around the world can see that okay and finally day 7 we are going to end our boot camp but on day 7 i will be giving you a project okay so there will be two project okay one project that we are going to demonstrate in the session okay and another project that you guys have to do that okay now there will be two project one being that i am going to instruct you how you have to make it but for the second project you guys have to do that project okay and you will be given a deadline of one week you will be given a deadline of one week that means within that week you have to complete the project and you have to submit that project why do we have to submit the project the reason being is that you must have aware that in order if you're attending this session you will be getting some certification you will be getting some certification right and these are not some ordinary certification okay these certification are from google okay gdg group that is a google developer group and microsoft student partner as well okay so in order to get the certification you have to do two things always remember this thing first thing is that you need to have 100 percent attendance you need to have 100 percent attendance that means in each day you have to fill your attendance form that means from day seven that means from seven days you need to get out of seven days attendance to fulfill this criteria and second of and second is project submission. Second is project submission. You need to submit a project that will be going to discuss on day seven. Okay. Within this one week of time, you need to submit the project. Our team will going to rectify the project, whether it's a genuine project or not, or is it a copy? So we are going to disqualify that submission. If it's a genuine project and everything is uh, good, so we are going to provide you with the certification. So this will remain be the structure. This will remain be the structure for this upcoming bootcamp. Is this clear to all of you? Is this clear to all of you? Give me a confirmation. Is this clear to all of you? Give me a confirmation, please. Give me a confirmation, please. Thank you. Okay, so how exactly attendance will going to follow up that at the end of each session, I will be providing you a Google form. Okay, in that Google form, you have to fill your, all your details and that will going to act as your attendance for each day. That will going to act as your attendance for each day. Okay, and please remember that thing that I will be providing you the attendance thing at the end of the session. Okay, so it's a request. Please, please, please don't ask about the attendance link or attendance form during the session because it will going to break the flow of learning, right? Over here, please focus on learning instead of certification because certification is just a piece of paper if you don't have that knowledge. Always remember this thing, okay? So please focus on the learning. Certification will going to be provided, but please focus on the learning and please don't say that uh, provide the certification, uh, provide the attendance link in during in between. Okay, that's a request from my end to all of you. Okay, is that clear? Is that clear? Give me a confirmation, please. Give me a confirmation. The duration, this, uh, uh, each session will be comprised of for one hour, right? We are going to study for one hour and after that one hour, we are going to provide you the attendance link each day and you have to fill that and that's it. That's it. Perfect. So let's start. Let's start with our day one, what we are going to do today. Okay, perfect. So today we are going to start with python today we are going to start with python right so when i say when you read the title it says machine learning model using flask now most of the time we know that machine learning has been done with the python programming language okay it is not the only programming language that can do machine learning but 
it is one of them and at the topest at the top is programming language that can be used for machine learning okay and when i say using flask flask is a web framework about python so lots of complex complex term over here right so let's start with the scratch what is this python what exactly is this python okay what do you know about python uh python is obviously it's not a snake definitely we know right now okay a python is a programming language can i say a python is a programming language yes or no give me a confirmation can i say a program uh, python is a programming language yes or no please give me a confirmation it's a language it's a programming language okay perfect it's an oop language that's great that's great it's an oop language right but concisely it's a python is a programming language now to understand what is python we know that okay we have a statement as a python is a programming language but what exactly does this mean what exactly does this mean what is a programming language we know okay it's a programming language but what is a programming language that means let's let's take an example to understand it okay let's suppose over here i am having a person okay over here i am having person he's from japan let's say this person is from japan okay i am having another person let's suppose he is from spain let's suppose he is from spain okay now this japanese person don't doesn't know anything a single word of spanish obviously japanese uh, this uh, person who is living in japan will be speaking japanese and the person living in spain will be speaking spanish right now what happen is if we want to communicate with each other if we want to communicate with each other we use a certain language yes or no we use a certain language this language could be anything it could be spanish english or any kind of stuff right so this lang what exactly is this language this language is useful to communicate between person to person if you want to communicate like i am communicating with you if you know english you can easily understand me what exactly i am telling you right i am communicating with you and how we are communicating we are communicating with the help of language we are communicating with the help of language right similarly in the computer field in the it field or in this entire computer world what we do is we have two person with us we have two person with us one is human one is human and other is computer other is computer now if you want to interact with computer then definitely you have to know some language you have to know some language if you want to communicate between uh, human want to communicate with a uh, computer or computer want to communicate with human you need to have a language and that language is known as a programming language that language is known as a programming language okay with the help of this programming language a human can communicate with machine and vice versa you a computer can communicate with human till here it's clear till here it's clear yes or no give me a confirmation give me a confirmation yes or no perfect okay now we know that okay if you want to communicate with each other we use a language but in language also there are plenty of languages there are plenty of languages we have english we have uh, uh what we have we have spanish we have german we have japanese and so on and so forth right similarly to communicate Uh, you, if you, if human wants to communicate to computer and communicate uh, computer wants to communicate human we have different kinds of programming languages as well can you name some can you name some let me ask you all of you can you name some programming language please please tell me can you name some programming languages please can you your java okay we are getting now c c++ java perfect c c++ java python awesome guys awesome so we have c we have c++ we have java we have python so this is what a programming language is and python is a programming language python is a programming language so we are now clear that python is a pro programming language and what do we mean by the term programming right now we are going to understand why only python why we are learning about python today why python is so much famous everywhere we go we uh, we uh, we hear about some concept like data science machine learning data analysis uh, deep learning and everything revolves around python 
everything revolves around python so why python why python why not java why not c why not c++ they are also powerful language c is the more faster than python why we are not preferring uh, c why only we are preferring python let's understand this way that this python this python right so when python has been launched when it was developed it was not uh, making much more impact it was not making much more impact okay when Guido and Rissom has developed this Python programming language it has they have created in a fact that it will be a simplest language that means human can easily understand that because we know that in order to program in order to communicate with a computer we should know 0 and 1 we should know 0 and 1 language that is known as a binary language we should know about binary language now it is very difficult for a human to communicate with a uh, computer using the binary language yes or no because computer can easily understand binary language but it is very difficult for human to do that right now uh, if, if you are writing something over here let's say we are writing in the term python right if it would have turned out to be in a uh, binary language how how we would have written like this it might be something like this right and it is very difficult to make this combination it is very difficult to make this combination right so what happened is that Guru and Rissom has developed a programming language that will be very easy for human to understand that would be very easy for human to understand so human can write it down in a very simple language automatically computer will going to understand it okay now to explain this Term, let me show you one more example what exactly does this mean that a human can easily understand that and machine how machine will going to understand let's see this let's take the same example we have a person over here okay this person is from Japan let's say this person is from Japan and we are also going to have a person whose name who is coming from Spain who is coming from Spain now the person who is living in Japan doesn't know a single word of Spanish the person who is living in Japan doesn't know a single word of Spanish and the person living in Spain doesn't know a single word of Jap uh, Japanese now if I ask you do you think will it be very easy for both of them to communicate do you think will it be very easy for both of them to communicate with each other yes or no tell me what do you think what do you think no of course right no exactly no because it will be very difficult for both of them to communicate right it might happen that Japanese person is saying uh, konnichiwa konnichiwa this Spain the other person who is from Spain might be thinking that this uh, Japanese person is abusing me it might happen right and this uh, Spanish person might be saying hola and this Spanish or uh, this Japanese person will be thinking that this Spanish person is abusing me and there will be a lot of confusion with each other there's a lot of confusion with each other right now this is this was the first scenario this was the first scenario where we understand that if both of them doesn't know each other's language there will be a lot of fuss there will be a lot of confusion there will be a lot of chaos there will be a lot of fuss right now how about if I put a third person in between if I put a third person in between the name of this person is name of this person is translator name of the person is translator that means this translator not this translator person not only knows Japanese but this translator person also knows Spanish now how the process is going to go like this Japanese person will going to give some word to this translator like suppose it uh, the Japanese person says hey konnichiwa Konnichiwa. Now this word goes to translator. Translator will going to translate this and will going to send in the Spanish word, like say, hola, hola. So now do you don't you think that it will be very easy process? Now don't you think that it will be very easy process for both of them to communicate with each other when the translator has came in? Yes or no? Yes or no? Come on, come on, come on. Tell me exactly yes it will be very easy for both of them to communicate with each other because we have a translator so in similar way if i replace this if i say this japanese person is none other than human and this spanish person is none other than computer and in between we have the compilers and interpreter compilers and interpreter oh uh, interpreter so this is the entire structure and in this konnichiwa let me say this is python 
and this OLA will be let's say 010101 binary languages and to get a response this computer will going to send something and this compiler will going to give you something this is the same workflow that will going to happen human doesn't know about computer's language computer doesn't know about human's language computer doesn't speak any english uh, english language or uh, any other language right what happens is computer will going to write on its own language the language that computer knows the language that computer knows and will going to pass through a translator over here the name of the translator is a compiler and interpreter these are the more frequent term that you will going to find out during the programming languages right c uses the compiler whereas python uses the interpreter that's how python is known as the high level language and c known as the lower level language high level language means is that is more close to human and low level language it means that which is more close to machine which is more close to computer or con computer understandable form okay so these are the two terms that you should uh, keep in mind uh, high level language and low level language okay high level language and low level language okay you high level language and this is low level language now what happened is that when you give uh, some interview when you go for an interview of like suppose that is revolving around python what happened is that most of the time interviewer ask you what is a high level language and what is a low level language and do tell me whether python is a high level language or low level language now what happened is that various student take this high level and low level language in different way Various students take these two phrases in different way. They think that high level language means that more difficult language. The dif if the language is more difficult, it is a high level language. Like we usually say that, right? When we define some kind of person that, oh, that person is high level. That person, that means that person has a high standard or it is most costly person and so on and so forth. Sometimes it happens, not sometimes, but most of, most of the time it happens that uh, people or the students takes this high level language and low level language in a wrong way this high level language means the language that is more close to human or human under understandable form okay that is known as high level language and low level language means that that is more close to computer and computer understandable form so now if i ask you this this python a high level language or low level language tell me come on come on come on come on tell me tell me tell me is python is python is a high level language or a low level language come on python is a high level language exactly not because python is uh, something great or something like that no because python is nearer to human human can easily understand that right now if i ask you c is c a high level language or c a low level language is c a high level language or c a low level language come on C. I'm talking about this language C. Come on, it's a low level language because in C, this is C is more close to compiler. Sorry, uh, it is more close to machine. It is more close to machine, right? So, this interpreter is being used by Python and this compiler is being used by C. That's why something that is close to machine will going to work more faster as compared to something that is more close to human right something that is more close to uh, machine will going to work more faster as compared to something that is more close to a uh, human right so that's why compiler works more faster than the interpreter that's why since python uses interpreter it has been considered as the slow as compared to c when you compare python with c language we always say that python is slower than c because the reason being is python uses the interpreter and uh, c uses the compiler and python is a high level language c is a low level language and what is high level language what is low level language now you know how exactly this entire workflow works yes or no give me a thumbs up if it's clear to all of you till now give me a thumbs up if it's clear to all of you till now come on come on come on come on tell me clear clear perfect awesome shall we move forward shall we move forward perfect let's go on okay so it's clear like how exactly we communicate with computer right now we are having this python why only python the thing is that when python has been developed right during our uh, late 90s when python has been developed it was not that much famous it was not that much famous because at that time most of the uh, programming language that is c and c plus plus and then we have the java were already taking a high-end grip 
okay everything has been done by these three languages already everything has been done by these three language and they are pretty much good in all those language all those uh, computation thing right because c is more faster if i ask you that if you want to compute if you want to uh, no uh, compute some a lot of algorithms right which programming language will you going to prefer a programming language that is more faster or programming language that is slower obviously you will going to go with a programming language that is more faster right so at that time python didn't get a much more appearance right python was there but most of the people were not using python because at that time the higher end thing was people were working on web development people have were working on web development they were working on some uh, mobile applications mobile application because we know that from the late 90s only the revolution of mobile phone has become and have taken a boom right and from then only we have seen how a um, mobile phone has been created how computers has been created and so on and so forth right they were doing all this kind of stuff now when as the time passes by as the time passes by the scientists realize that as we are going forward we are generating a lot of things we are generating a lot of things that is the data we are generating a lot of data that means if suppose if you are if you have invented uh, let's like suppose you have developed an application right this is a e-commerce application now a person who will going to come in your application will going to purchase something definitely you will going to store their information in a db db means a database right if suppose a person comes up will going to say that i want to buy this stuff right what you will going to tell that person hey if you want to buy this stuff first log in or create an id and then log in and do, do all the things so what happen is you are storing their information in a database you are storing an information in a database that's a general thing you will going to do right as the time passes by we have assumed we have seen not assumed we have seen that there are a lot of data being created people are using lot of applications and those application are creating a lot of data okay now to handle this kind of data how we can use this data to make profits how we can use this data to make profit we are having a data but how we can make this data profitable right so that's why from then a lot of scientists has been working on the field of data science data science were already there but from then all of uh, to tackle of all the situations to all this uh, to find a uh, alternate solution for this kind of problem people were working with on data science and data science is a domain that contains a plenty of domains okay data science is a super set of all the domain that means machine learning comes under data science data analysis comes under data science deep learning comes under data science uh, big data comes under data science database engineer comes under, under data science if you even the full stack full stack is also part of data science you should know how to create a website you should know how to create an application everything comes under data science so if you know all this stuff then only you can call yourself as a data scientist then only you can call yourself as data scientist okay now what all we can do with python what all we can do with python you can do needless to everything everything with python whether it will be whether it will be a web development whether it will be a web developer if you say that no i want to create a website i want to create a website is it possible to use python because python is more uh, back end language because nowadays we have node we have mon stack mean stack is it possible to create it python yes it is you can go with flask you can go with django these two are the frameworks these two are the web frameworks of python with them you can easily create the entire website you said okay website is done perfectly fine okay i want to create an app i want to create a mobile application now is it possible to use python because you know if you want to create a mobile application currently the uh, most uh, famous technology that is going on is flutter you must have heard about that i believe so flutter and react native anyone flutter and react native anyone come on come on you must have heard about that come on flutter and react native kotlin exactly we have java and kotlin at earlier but now flutter and react native is going on and on at so boom right every person is learning about them right but is it possible can i do with python yes you can do with python if you want to do a mobile development not only a native app but an hybrid app or a cross platform app cross platform app cross platform means that you will going to write a core at once for both android and ios 
that's what the speciality about flutter and react native so you can do that with python if you want to go with that you can use kiwi framework this is a mobile framework for python okay now in this market the best thing for web development is going as the monstack and meanstack right these are all the alternative that if you don't want to switch if you don't want to study, if you say that I have learned Python, now if I want to make a website, now I have to uh, consume a lot of more time to understand our Monstack, Meanstack. If that's your case, then you can use go with this uh, kind of situation. Then you can go with all this alternative, right? Because Monstack and Meanstack are more powerful than Flask and Django. Okay, they are more faster, they are more creative. But if you say that now I want to do something in Python only. So Python has everything for you. Similar with the mobile uh, development. If you ask me that uh, if you want to create a mobile development, will you going to prefer KV? I say no. I am definitely going to prefer uh, Flutter or React Native. But since if if I fall under such condition that I only know Python because I know in, to learn Flutter to do Flutter, I need to learn uh, uh, the Dart programming language and to do React Native, I need to understand about JavaScript and Reacts and all that, right? If I I don't have much time and if I don't have the will to learn anything then I can go with Kiwi with that help of Kiwi I can easily create a mobile application right if you say that okay that's perfectly fine web is done mobile is done can I make a desktop application can I make a software for a desktop application you must have seen that when you install some kind of software let's say Photoshop when you install a Photoshop you get a entire interface in your desktop only right because it's not a web application it's not a mobile application, but it's a desktop application. Can I do with Python? Most of, uh, earlier, what happened that the best language for a desktop application being considered as Java. Until now, it is. Okay. If you want to create a desktop application, you can go with Java. But if you want to do with Python, everything is Python over here. You can go with the library known as Kinder. You can go with the Kinder library. With the help of this, you can easily do that. With the help of this, you can easily do that. Now, see, there are a lot of things that we can do with Python, right? If you say that I want to build a game, the best programming language for a game is C++. C++ and C Sharp are the best programming language for game. If you must have heard about uh, GTA, you must have seen about uh, Call of Duty or uh, PUBG. They are all been involved with the C++. C++ is been for the gaming part. If you want to go on to the augmented reality, if you want to go on to the making games and all that, go with C++ and C Sharp. Okay. Now, if you say that I want to go with game development, is it possible? Is it possible Python? Yes, it is. You can go with Pygame. You can go with Pygame. Pygame is a library for Python to make game. Not a complex one, but a very simple one. Like a Flappy the Bird, you can create a Mario game with the help of Python. You can find a lot of tutorials around that, right? So over here, you, we have everything in store. We have everything in store. That means Python is not saying that I am dedicatedly for some part. I am dedicatedly for some part. I am only for data science. No, Python is saying I am an all-rounder. I am an all-rounder, but only the reason is that I don't have much grip, much potential over these kind of stuff, right? Python is dedicately for scientific let me write over here scientific applications scientific uh, not application scientific needs for all the scientific needs scientific calculation scientific computation python has been considered at the top that's why we have the field known as machine learning let's go with, let's start with deep uh, let's start with data analysis Let's start with data analysis. Okay. Uh, if you want to perform data analysis, if you want to perform data analysis, you can go with Python. Okay. You you uh, you need to learn about uh, pandas. You need to learn about NumPy. You need to learn about Matplotlib. Matplotlib and Seaborn are for the visualization. Okay. Oh, it's not Seaborn. Seaborn. Perfect. And for the machine learning, if you want to go with the machine learning, you can go with uh, Scikit-Learn. Okay, if you say I want to create something like a Tesla car model, I want to create a car uh, in which I want to integrate my model so that what happened that it will going to see everything will going to assume everything and take images and will go to detect something you can go with deep learning deep learning can easily be done by Python. Okay, you, you have TensorFlow over here. TensorFlow that has been launched by Google, uh, Google. then we have Keanu, then we have Keras, we have PyTorch and what not what not okay python and there are a lot of things if you want to do the automation you say that no i am getting bored about my task 
uh, how is it possible I can automate everything so what happened is that I can run one script and everything will be automated for me I can I automate something yes you can do that with Python easily all of the thing that you need to do the automation will be selenium or you can go with pi auto GUI pi auto GUI if you say okay that that's interesting is it possible to do web scrapping is it possible to do web scrapping and web scrapping uh, is a part of data analysis that is a part of a data gathering when you don't have a data and you want to gather it from internet you want to create your own data from internet then this web scrapping concept comes in so you can also do the web scrapping with the help of python and what are the libraries that we use we use beautiful soup we use beautiful soup and we have scrappy we have scrappy okay so these are some of the application along with the libraries if you can take a screenshot please do take it because it will going to help you out uh, according to your uh, condition that suppose if you have created a machine learning model and you want to create a web application then what all uh, thing I can go with a web application you can go with flask and Django if suppose you want to integrate in your mobile development and you want to launch that mobile application on Google or in App Store you can use Kiwi you can go with Kinter you want to make games with Python you can do each and everything okay so here are the references about the development and here are the packages and uh, libraries to use that and these are all Python that means if you know Python you can do all of this thing is it clear till here is this clear till here is this clear till here okay okay is this clear perfect so this is all the stuff that you can do with python and over here this part this part it is python is very very strong in this area if you say I can I do with Java yes you can do with Java but if you compare with Python Python will going to easily defeat Java with respect to all this due to its simplicity due to its simplicity Python has gained a lot of followers nowadays everything everywhere you go you will going to find Python okay at least uh, for like uh, if you're searching for like top for 10 programming language you will oftenly going to find out this python on top at least in top 3 you will always going to find python first maybe the javascript or second it might be javascript but we will always going to find python because a lot of people are switching towards python due to its simplicity due to its simplicity i hope it's clear to all of you i hope it's clear to all of you okay okay i hope it's clear to all of you is it clear please give me a confirmation guys if you are getting this if you are getting this okay let's go on and understand this is all about the theoretical stuff we have learned yeah javascript is the best okay yeah definitely depend upon the preferences okay okay so we have uh, talked about a lot of theoretical knowledge why only python why not other languages and why python is so more uh, preferable nowadays right now the thing is that we will going to understand about what exactly in this python what exactly in this python how we can operate python easily okay that's a lot of theoretical knowledge let's move on to the practical knowledge first of all if you want to use your python in your local or in your system you need to install python you need to install python right suppose if you want to buy an iphone first if you want to play a game in iphone let's suppose you want to play pubg in iphone so first of all you have to buy iphone then only you can play an, a game on iphone yes or no First of all, you have to purchase an iPhone, right? So similarly over here, if you want to use Python, you have to install Python. And how we are going to install Python is just go onto your Google, type over here Python. Okay, you will going to get the website of Python that is python.org. Click on that. Okay, and click on this download part based on your operating system whether it's your mac for me it's mac so this website automatically detects that what operating system you are so you are working on right for me it is showing for the download section for mac if you're on windows if you're on linux it will automatically going to detect and will going to tell you about that so current version over here that is going is 3.10.1 okay what you need to do is uh, let me click on this view full list of downloads so these are the versions these are all the versions of python right so if you want the latest version this is a 3.10 what you can do is click on download and click on this python 3.10 and the uh, installation is very very simple it's just you have to keep next 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 and that's it and that's it okay so from here you can easily download your python okay 
Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes or no? Is it no? Is it clear to all of you? Come on, come on, come on. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, how to download Python in uh, Android? Well, what you can do is you can uh, download any application for Python, right? If you call, if you are going to, if you want to use uh, Python on your Android system, that also can be possible. Either you can go with Termux, you can install that manually, or you can go with any kind of ID or code editor. You can search on uh, Python, or you can search on Play Store for the Python. Okay, Python or uh, terminal, uh, Python uh, compiler, oh, sorry, Python ID and all that text editor, you will easily going to get that up. Okay, now we have installed Python, right? Now we need something to write on code because we are doing programming, right, guys? So we need to write something and we're going to get some output. So that is known as you can call this as an IDE, you can call this as a text editor. Okay, this is a GUI or this is a kind of software that will going to help you out to write Python code in it. That will going to help you out to write Python code in it and you can interact with the machine and you can create a lot of application see these output. So what kind of IDE and what kind of uh, course uh, source code editor I can use that either you can go with PyCharm either you can go with PyCharm you can go with VS code most of you must have heard about this VS code okay or you can go with a uh, spider that comes under the anaconda you can uh, download the anaconda from that you can use this spider and there are different different id and different different course uh, source code editor if you want to go with python or oh, sorry pycharm what you can do is uh, on google just search for pycharm okay you will be going to get this pycharm click on this and you can easily click on this download section and it will going to ask you whether you are working on mac uh, so Mac or Windows or Linux. So since I'm working on Mac, I can download my uh, for my Mac version. You have to go with community version because the community version is as free of cost. Okay, for this professional version, it it will going to ask you to pay a certain amount because it is more advanced. It has more advanced features, right? So if you want to use professional version as well, if you want to say that no, I want to use professional version at free of cost. What you can do is you can sign up for GitHub uh, student uh, pro program uh, something like that. It is student program. Uh, entire expect where you get the entire access for a lot of softwares at free of cost right so you can go with that if you're working on windows just go on to windows and download this community version because this community version is free of cost it's free of cost and if you are going to download this profession it is a free trial that means at a certain point of view uh, point of time they will going to ask you to purchase this okay so there are two ways if you want to use professional uh, uh, kindly go with community uh, can you go with the community version if community version if you want to go with professional version at free of course go and uh, sign up for github student or uh, something like that let me show you this uh, it's uh, github what's the full form github stu yeah go, uh, github student developer pack okay so in this go, uh, github student developer pack you will be getting a free access of pycharm professional okay you will getting a pycharm professional it must be over here let me search this is coming from get brains uh, this is coming from yeah this is a JetBrains right this is a company that is JetBrains you will be getting professional desktop ID you can go with IntelliJ and this is a PyCharm over here and it will be free okay so you just what you need to do is if you're a student you can sign up for student developer pack and you will be going to get an access for this PyCharm at free of cost okay now since uh, our Python is installed our software is installed we are good to go okay in this uh, in this entire session i will be using google collab i will be using a google collab what is a google collab actually it's a notebook and it's a cloud notebook it's a cloud notebook it's a cloud notebook that means it's a notebook and that has been hosted on cloud okay it has been given by google it has been given by google google at free of cost okay so what happened is that you can use google servers you can use google servers at free of cost. you can use google rams you can use google uh, gpu cpu and tpu as well if you are not even though if you are an android user let's say if you don't have a system you say i don't have a system is it possible to use and uh, write some code on of uh, you know uh, python on uh, on my android phone or any kind of phone yes you can do that you just need to have this google collab how can i install this google collab let's see only thing that you need is internet okay what you need to do this is how google collab looks like how can i find out this google collab is just that you need to go on to google search over here google collab 
okay in order to use google collab you need to have an email id or gmail email id and i am pretty much sure that every student have that right click on this google collaboratory and from here you can create your own google collab you can click on this new notebook and it will going to create your new notebook you can x or you can change the name if you want to go with that and this is the ram you can see the ram that has been provided is 12.69 gb that means i can easily use 12 uh, approximately 12.5 gb of ram along with the disk size okay so over here this is the entire thing how you will going to set up the python environment is this clear to all of you yes or no is this clear to all of you yes or no okay is it clear perfect awesome so now we are good to go if you want to go do the python on your local you can go with any ide you can go with any sort of uh, co code editor but in this entire session due to the sake of simplicity we are going to do python in the google collab and when we are going to switch towards the flask we are going to use vs code editor because that's what the when we, when we are going to create a software that software cannot be created in your collab that software cannot be created in this collab collab is kind of notebook which is best recommended for data science uh analysis and all that but if you want to create a software you have to move on to either ide or you can move toward the co-editor okay you can move toward the editor okay that's all uh is it good do you want me to go on or do you want me to stop for uh, over here for today come on tell me you want me to go on or do you want me to stop here for today come on come on come on tell me tell me tell me stop <laughs> okay okay cool 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 perfect not an issue oh continue perfect okay there are some person who wants to learn more perfect not an issue so let's see since uh, a lot of people are saying to stop today we are going to stop the session over here so uh, today we have talked about a lot of theoretical knowledge right so tomorrow we're going to start with a practical implementation of python okay it will be very basic to understand what is python the the only prerequisite to understand about python is that you should know english language okay if you know english language you know python that's how simple python is and if someone asks you that why python is simple now you know the reason the reason being is since Python uses an interpreter and Python is a high level language. That's why it is very easy for a human to understand that. Okay, perfect. So that's the entire wrap for day one. Today, uh, that's what from my end. Tomorrow, we're going to start with the practical implementation of Python and the next day as well. And then we are going to start with the machine learning. And this is a very exciting, you know, this will be going to be very exciting uh, session. Uh, when we dive into the machine learning we are going to create a model and when we are going to integrate with flask to make our new website with the help of only python okay and then we are going to host it live so everyone can see that okay so perfect that's all from my end let me share the today's attendance link what you need to do is this is your attendance link okay let me copy this and let me show you how it will going to look like okay you just have to go to this attendance link uh this is for the day one okay you have to fill all this information that is your email full name uh, your phone number whatsapp number college name and so on so forth that all the information that has been given click on this submit that's it that's all you need to do okay and this attendance link is very very important for you because i have already explained you that in order to get a certification not only you have to submit the project but also you need to get 100% attendance you need to get 100% attendance so please make sure about this day one attendance link and try to fill it as soon as possible because it may happen that in the upcoming hours we are going to close this application we are going to close this entire form okay perfect so let me share your share the link over here share the link over here and let me ping this link on the chat section so if uh, you can uh, see that the link has been uh, pinged up on the top of the chat section you can go on and you can fill up the attendance link <laughs> okay perfect is there any question you want me to answer if you have any question please ask in the chat section itself do you have any question okay some people are saying go on that's great okay but we have to take others as well right is there any uh question 
uh, is there any problem by giving attendance two times in web development uh, i have no idea about web develop uh, web development right this is only dedicated for the machine learning i have no idea for that okay uh, what is this? What about those are not in college? I uh, are you talking about the GitHub student? Uh, that what was that? Uh, student uh, developer kit? Are you talking about that? Please share the worksheet. This worksheet and this class. See, uh, we are going to do everything in this worksheet, this Jamboard, and in this collab notebook. And these two will be shared with you on the last day. Okay, these two will be shared with you on the last day. Okay, so please be patient for the upcoming six days, and these two will be shared with you on the last day okay thank you uh what is this uh, how to become an app developer okay you're more if you're more interested in app developer you can start with flutter because flutter is very easy earlier we have kotlin and java but now since we have the flutter and react native you can uh, choose uh, any of them uh, if you ask me i'm going to say that if you want to go with more creative apps go with flutter if you go, want to go with more faster apps and creative as well you go with react native okay there's always con uh, competition between these two perfect anyone else okay anyone else anyone else any more question any more question yeah you can use vs code yeah you can use vs code vs code is so amazing that you can use uh, any kind of extension for that you can uh, no uh, you can access the google collab so not google collab but you can access a notebook on the uh, VS Code using some kind, uh, some of the extension as well. You can use that as well. Okay. You can go with Kotlin. Yes, you can go with Kotlin. But the only thing is that if you're going to go with Kotlin, you will be going to create a native application. That means for Android, you need to write one. And if you want to create for the iOS, you need to go to shift. You cannot create uh, iOS app with using the Kotlin. You will only going to create a, a native app using the Kotlin and the java if you want to create hybrid app or the cross-platform app that i'm going to write only once and at the same time uh code for the android will also going to generate it and code for the ios will also going to get generated then you can go with flask oh sorry then you can go with flutter because flutter uses a programming language of dart or you can go with react native okay which is the best language python or c plus plus c there is no comparison you can only compare with a kind of situation if you ask me for gaming you have to go with C++. If you ask me for the data science, then you have to go with Python. Okay. So the, uh, to, there is no barrier that you can, you know, compare any kind of language. All the languages are good and they have better understanding in their own region. Okay. You can compare them only with situation, situation to situation, but it doesn't make the other apps worse as compared to the first one. Okay. Uh, next is uh, how to use Django. So uh, you can use Django easily because Django is a framework. Okay. Uh, if you know about web, how web actually work, you know about request, you can easily go with Django and you can create a lot of projects. You can uh, you, you can search for a lot of playlists. I'm not sure that we have any kind of playlist or uh, this kind of bootcamp, but if you surely want uh, to how you can use flood or uh, how you can uh, go with Django, how we can uh, create an application. So do let us know so that in upcoming time, I'm going to create these kind of videos as well. Okay, how to become a data scientist? Oh, that's a very, very frequent asked question. Okay, uh, for to be a data scientist, you need to have a lot of knowledge. Always remember this thing. You need to uh, be a, you need to uh, hold a lot of position. You need to be a machine learning engineer. You need to be a data analyst. You need to be a big data engineer. And there are a lot of things in that. There are a lot of things in there we cannot explain by saying that but most probably during the session if we get some time i'm going to tell you how you can be a data scientist as well what all things that you should know and how you can achieve in order to become the data scientist okay perfect ha huh, that's a lot for today's uh deployment will be same for the yeah deployment will be ex exactly same for supervised learning unsupervised learning or you want to integrate your deep learning model it will absolutely be same okay it will absolutely be same perfect uh anything else uh, i'm not sure if there are any course related to ethical hacking will be there okay that's not my cup of tea okay my cup of tea is towards the data science only so i'm not sure if team are up to something then definitely you will be getting uh anything anything any more question is there any problem uh i'm not sure about the web development uh but software engineer requires python yeah definitely software engineer do require python right if the company is uh, if the company has a uh, infrastructure that has been built on django 
right? Then they use Python. Google use Python, Instagram use Python because the Instagram backend has been created with Django. Django is a web framework of Python, right? So Python can be, Python is used in the software in, in, uh, engineering field a lot in the AWS, in the clouds, everywhere uh, Python has been used. Tomorrow at the same time, we're going to start the day two. That is from six o'clock or it might be vary from six to six ten. Okay, so till then, please uh, be patient. So that's all for today's, I believe so. Thank you so much for joining in guys. Let's meet tomorrow. Till then, have a great time and be safe as well. Okay, thank you so much. Good night. Have a great time. Bye. Thank you.